from the News Channel 5 Network, this is the Tecus McGinnis Elder Care Law Hour. Welcome to Tecus McGinnis Elder Care Law Hour, where we explore the many issues that arise due to aging, disability, and unexpected illness. I'm your co-host, Tim Tecus. And I'm Barbara McGinnis. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about spring cleaning. What about your documents? What kind of legal documents should you have and where should you store them? In our first segment, we're going to be talking to each other. I'm going to ask Tim some questions and Tim, tell us what, uh, where should, where, where, where not what, but where, where yeah. should your estate planning documents be stored? Okay, wills, trust, powers of attorney, healthcare exactly. powers of attorney, all of that. Um, yeah. We, we, can also, we can always tell you where not to store them, so, and that's not what your question was, but, but where, you, where you don't want to store them is a place where nobody can get them. The bank. The, the bank and a safe mm -hmm. deposit box, because we always, tell, you know, you yeah. know, we always tell our clients and our families is, is that when do emergencies or crises happen? Friday night mm -hmm. on a holiday right weekend. weekend. Yeah. You know, and the most important thing is is that, that families have access to the documents and they can get to them when they need them. Mm -hmm. So often that means you put them in um, maybe the drawer, uh, the desk drawer, the upper left hand desk drawer, yeah. you know, in a binder. You put them in a, um, a fireproof box underneath the bed. We've had clients that have done that. Mm -hmm. you know, and don't lock it. Right. Right. right, because we've had people go, well, you know, it's I can get it, but I can't get the box open. Because it's not something that's going to be stolen. Yes. We don't have to worry about it being stolen. Well, like one of my colleagues said many, many years ago, is she tells, she would always tell her clients and families is, these don't have street value. <laughs> that's true. You know, thieves don't steal them, and then, because what happens yeah. is, is that they get the box, and they open it up, and then they throw all those documents out, because, right. you know, that's not what we, you know, so that's the idea, is, is that the most important thing is, is that they're available to people when you need them. So they have to be somewhere where they can be found. Right. Um, we do live, it, it's springtime, and we yes. live in the south, and it's, you know, tornado season. So yes, you think is. about, we, we have had clients where they've come back and said their documents, documents. have literally blown away because right. of, um, of a storm. Now, right. that doesn't happen to a lot of people, thank goodness, but something heavy helps too. Exactly. So if right. you have a gun safe at home, storing it in your gun mm -hmm. safe. Um, the fireproof box that you store them in in the house. Mm -hmm. I've, I've seen clients that have uh, secured that box to the floor right. of the closet. And some clients have told me that they keep them in their freezer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and because I've they don't want it to burn because yes. they're worried about them burning up. Yes, and that's something that people don't realize is is that when you, like when a house burns up, mm -hmm. uh, usually the, the house fires don't get hot enough to burn up a freezer. Yeah. You know, and so now that doesn't mean that you might want to, you know, store it in a Ziploc bag or something. You know, don't like leave it out because that would be just nasty, <laughs> right? You know, yeah. if you got it in the freezer and it's not stored. And there's some know, pieces of paper, paper floating around in your or, freezer, or yeah. Worse, yeah. yeah, or worse, yeah, or worse. Okay, so should anyone else have copies of these documents? Yes, yes. Right. So mostly, what you're looking at is uh, when we're talking about copies of documents, essential documents. Usually when there's a crisis, it's, it's usually somebody needs to make a decision and they, did, and they need to prove that they have authority to make a decision for their loved one. So that means a durable power of attorney or a health care power of attorney. Right. You know, and those are copies that, uh, that families or that the client, the elder client particularly, should share with their loved one. Yeah. So for instance, um, I make you know, I make a power of attorney and I give it to my grandson or whatever it is because he needs to have a copy of it. Now he doesn't need to have the original. Right. You know, and what we found that works very well in today's world is is that everybody has a has a smartphone or a mm -hmm. cell phone, not one of those flip phone things because those yeah. don't work. Yeah. Uh, but literally, where um, you have a PDF, you have a, a document that um, that you can store on your phone. And there's all kinds, of, there are apps. There that, are apps for that. Particular apps that mm -hmm. can store documents. Right. 
Um, you can have a, depending on how many people you want to share these documents with, I mean, maybe there's multiple. We don't normally like, like co-powers of attorney. Right. We don't recommend that, but sometimes there are at least a primary and a secondary. So apps on your phone that could store copies of these documents. The ABA has a, do, uh, has a document storage app. Yeah. That's the American Bar Association. Um, also something as simple as uh, Google Docs or a Dropbox account right. that you can store PDF documents in. Right. The good thing about the apps is is that they're easily identified. So if you open up your phone and you're yeah. going, okay, where is it? You know, you've got that app maybe on your home screen. You know, you're not right. trying to figure out where you stored the thousands of documents that you've got or whatever files on your phone. Right. Which kind of leads into um, another question that comes up a lot: Are copies uh, as good as having the original? And I think you've already alluded to. Yeah, yeah it is. They are. Yeah. yeah. Um, the only time that really you want to have the original is if you have to probate a will and you want to be able to keep track of that original will. Right. There's workarounds, but yeah. the court yeah. doesn't like it. Right, and, it, and we may yeah. be, maybe later in this segment we'll be able to get to that part. But So what about uh, old versions or, or multiple versions? What do you do when you've got a situation That's like right. that? That's right. Sometimes people have serial or you know where they update periodically and right. they, they may have multiple powers of attorney. How do you know that you have the right one mm -hmm. and what do you do with the old ones? Right. Well, we recommend that you that you shred those old ones that mm -hmm. you at least this destroy them in some sort of way so that when your agents have a version in their hand that they have some right. assurance that they have the most recent version right now, exactly now certainly you know if you um, you know if you do have um, like old versions of it you know you might want to keep a copy or the original for your biographer ah. <laughs> but most, Only you most, would think of that. Yes, but most people really don't need that. <laughs> right. You know, so having having multiple things floating around are just confusing, and and things like old life insurance policies, which is really a different thing. But but that really is a, some. I mean, those old policies that you know when you're when you were born and mom and dad bought you a life policy and well, they gave it to you when you're 21 and you still kept it. Oh, now. I had a thought. You were talking about old documents for your biographer. Yeah. I mean, that that's not really applicable to most everyone. Right. However, what is applicable is to show your maybe a copy of these of the prior will. Yes. You can mark on there that it's that it's not the current one, yes. that it's that it's been and why but, would, why would you do but that? But it shows your history of intention, whether yes. or not you've changed your mind over time, especially if you're doing something out of the ordinary. Right. Like if you're not leaving money to all your children in equal shares, mm -hmm. but that's been your estate plan for many, many years and you have documents that show that, might be a good idea sure. to show and, that, and, that there's not sure. any undue influence. Right, and we've actually had clients that have that come in, I think I can think of one or two clients that we've had over the years that they'll come in every two or three years just to execute a new one, just just to show that they still had the old, the, that their intent was still the same. The intent was still the same. Right. All right, so boxes of old documents. You're in a crisis situation. M uh, mom or dad has had some sort of uh, emergency event, and now you've got boxes that now you're what, looking through. Right. What do you do with them? Do you keep them? Do you start? What can you throw away? Well, probably under those circumstances, the first rule is to do no harm. <laughs> You know, so since you are in a crisis and you may be not really sure what you should keep what or throw need. away, mm -hmm. keep it if you're not sure, because right. ch chances are you're likely to be able to go to revisit that box later. You know, now, needless to say, that you know the, the lesson there is not to get into that situation. Absolutely. You know, clean up after yourself if you're an old person or anybody for that matter is is that again it gets back to unless you're saving this stuff for a biographer, or there's some compelling yeah. reason why you want to keep this, you know, get rid of it. I think as people get more frail at home and that mm, their filing systems may start to, yeah. to, to lack and that right. you know you do come home maybe to a crisis and you don't know what kind of financial 
um, where the money is. Right. At the, so so that what you do you do under that case? Okay, we've got well, just we like 30 seconds We were talking so. about mm -hmm. that. What do you do? Daddy did all the finances and he had a stroke and now what do you do? Well, after you've searched all the obvious places in the house, then you have to start becoming a little bit of a private investigator. Uh, mm -hmm. Checking the mail, looking for statements. If you have a power of attorney and you're in a small town, maybe you can just go to the bank yeah. but um, and, and start finding out where. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times people don't want to share all that information. Yeah. They consider it very private. Private. Right, and and stay with us because in our next segments we'll be we'll be talking about how to find stuff, so or what to keep, or what yeah. to keep exactly. Uh, all right, we'll be back. We'll talk with a financial advisor next. Yes.